Hello, hello everyone, and welcome on back to the Core SMP. We are kicking off today's episode here in the Western Shopping District, our massive project from last episode, and here we are at the Mush Mush Market, our one-stop Sky Pirate shop, which I have just been finishing up the interior of. We didn't make too many changes because it was already mostly done. We just added this fun display piece at the back with just some bookshelves and decor. Here at the front as well, we've added a little customer satisfaction and reviews book so other members of the SMP can have a little bit of fun, leave us a review here at the shop. And heading upstairs, we didn't do too much here. We splashed around a tiny bit of carpet, added some decor right here above where the beds are, and added in this tiny little seating piece with a cake right here, bought fresh from the bakery just down in the Southern District. And we've still just left this area untouched available, so if we want to add more stock, we have that opportunity right here. But as much fun as I've been having with the interior here, there is just one problem and that is that as much as we have all these fun items here on sale in the shop there are quite a few that don't even have any stock so our big job for today's episode right here at the start is gonna be doing a little bit of a stock take i brought along my trusty book and quill so i need to figure out just how much we need and of what so that we can get gathering a few materials Alrighty guys, and the stock take is done, so here I've written everything, all amounts are in stacks for what we need, and there is quite a lot we need, but honestly, I'm really excited to just hang out and grind some materials for a little bit. Also though, while we are here, we should head over to Captain's Kelp as well, see how the stock is doing over there, and look at this, this is the new central area that Levy and Spy very recently built up. So we have this super cute map board right here with the little shed on it, this tiny little campfire, which... <gasps> I don't know if we have the mini jungle logs. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. And over here as well, actually, is the new portal tent with the wandering trader llama head there. And we have these signs that point us in the directions of all the different districts, which we are heading to the Eastern District, which now has a cute done up path as well. I love that they included Tuff in this path scheme. I'm pretty sure this one was Moose and Mittens' job, and I really like how it's turned out. This bridge especially is a super cute little touch. And here we are at Captain's Kelp, which let's see how our stock is doing here. Ooh, we have actually been selling quite a lot of our dried kelp. That is 15 diamonds. I love that. So we definitely are going to need a few more stacks of dried kelp. There we go. So we also need 15 stacks of dried kelp blocks for Captain's Kelp. And now as well, before we head off to start gathering our materials, I did want to swing by this new shop as well. I haven't been here yet, but I believe this one is done by Brad, another member of the SMP. He's opened this shop, Ice is Nice, a tidy whitey company, and it appears to be a little snow and ice shop. Awesome, this is going to be so nifty to have around. I might actually grab a little bit of packed ice while I'm here, so it's a diamond for three stacks. I will grab a bit of this to take home and put in storage because you never know when you're going to need a little bit of packed ice. And flying back in here to base and oh, oh, this is uh, my, my, my brown mushroom cow from, <laughs> from way back when we did the shopping district. That was definitely a few real life days ago now, more than a few, but I, he's, he actually did get stolen. When I was on stream in the shopping district, Spy and I think Odo as well tried to inform me they'd stolen the cow, but I thought it was a setup. I thought they were trying to make me check where I'd hidden the cow. So I was like, no, you can't make me look. I'm not going to go look because then they'll know where I hid the cow and everything's going to be in ruins. But it seems they kidnapped him anyway. At least they've returned him. But this is, that's a little bit rude. Come, come, let's get you somewhere warm and dry. Now, if you would like to step inside, please, sir, I will pop this here. Welcome to your new crib. <laughs> I have a house chicken, Commodore Cluck, back in the other house, and I guess you get to be my house mushroom cow. Beautiful. I love it. 
Now, now get off the furniture. This better not be exactly the same issue I have with the Commodore. And uh, if you guys have any name suggestions for our wonderful brown mushroom cow here, feel free to drop them in the comments. And now that that's taken care of, you may also notice we've got a little sign right here. Hi Blitz, please I need calcite. I'm willing to pay. Spy. So this is a notice from our French neighbor who I have been slowly siphoning all my calcite off to for a little while now. He's, he's building a lot of things with calcite. And we have been offered another trade deal for a large amount of calcite. So we'll have to add that to our grind lapse to-do list as well. And as well, as well, as well, because we've been getting a bit more established in the shopping district, we really have been bringing in a few more little trade deals. So Beyonder has also asked for a special order of honey from our little bee station. And now that we have all of that taken care of, let's launch into a little bit of a grind lapse and get our shops stocked up. And here we are back at Mush Mush Market and ready to move our stock into our actual shop shelves because up at the very top behind our more stock coming soon spot I have been placing all of our shulkers chock full of resources ready to get and keep this shop fully stocked up. So let me quickly take everything here and put it all into our display shelves. And there we go. This should be the last little bit of wood and now everything oh, <laughs> classic clicking on the item frame should be fully stocked up around here. There's a few things we're a little low on like the flower bush leaves or the uh, stem of shroom. Oh, um, by the way, we're, we're in pirate speak now. Our, uh, our items are all in pirate speak. I spotted this while we were grinding all those resources out and I just think it's so fun. I really love it. It's perfect for the entire theme. So if things have weird names, that's why. Also though, I did rename all my tools as well, but do let me know if you guys like it or not, if you think I should keep it because I really like it. I think it's super fun. It fits the theme well, but if it's a little difficult for you guys to understand things, let me know. I'm more than happy to have it just on normal speech as well. Let me sleep away the night. Right here but now that everything is oh levy's on hi hi oh is that a wandering trader oh my goodness yes surely 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 we need so many things oh my goodness oh it's so easy to get distracted but oh, how good barrels are you joking barrels would be so cute and under chests oh my god i love this okay let me quickly do some trading then get back to this <laughs> And there we go with that little bit of trading done and our shop stock taken care of. Let's head on home, get all these shulker boxes tucked away into storage and start thinking about a design for our villager breeder tavern. Oh, I think we've got a visitor. Yep, Beyonder is here alrighty. I've just finished up gathering for the trade deal for him. So let's get the honey blocks and four stacks of honey there we go fresh from the sky pirate kingdoms bee farm and our diamond payment wonderful yay 
And now, where should we leave our calcite delivery? Why don't we pop it just out front of his house right here in exactly the same spot we left the last thing we gave him. And there we go, I think something like that will do the job. And now, of course, I've brought along our shulkers full of calcite. We'll do all of this in here and all of this into the barrels as well. There we go, all the calcite is in the barrels. It was originally going to be two entire barrels full, but we gave him about 12 stacks a little bit early so that he could keep working on that build, which I won't spoil too much of. And let's leave a little sign. And there we go, one glowing. Ahoy there, here be the rest of your calcite. Enjoy. And now I'll have to just talk to him about getting me my payment because I am definitely, definitely needing some diamond blocks for all the hard work I did for this. And actually, while we're here, you may have noticed the paths in the area are all stone now, and the last time we were here, they were all coarse dirt. And there was mention in last episode of a job where me, Spy, and a few other members of the server, which ended up being mostly Levy, a little bit of help from Mittens, came in here and helped Spy transform all of his paths into this stone scheme you're seeing right now. So let's take a little trip back in time to when we transformed the paths here in France. So, making our way up the trade route to the northwest lands here at France, we are being commissioned to help transform all of the dirt roads throughout Spy's base into stonework. And it's going to be quite a fun little collaborative project. I think it's not only going to be Spy and I, Levy and Mittens might be coming along as well. We are all going to be getting together very, very shortly and transforming all of these paths into stonework for him for, of course, a nice sum of diamonds. Hello, Levy. Look at you soaring in. Um, there's some pillagers. Um, I'm checking their papers and honestly doesn't really check out. I feel like they'd try and cause trouble if we let them in. Yeah, they, they, they're not very <laughs> welcome in here. You know, we just we just don't really like them. They're going to the prison. That's in the good. prison? Are you building a prison yep. for pillagers? Oh, Zoom. Oh, I have a small Hello, one. greetings. Nyong. Nyong. So, okay, My little okay, big okay. Bin. Um, so I bring these two shulkers as well. So we've got um, a Yo. bit of andesite and just lots of this. The blue one's full of stone. The black one has a bit of stone and a little bit more that's, andesite. That's a huge amount of stone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said we needed some stone, so I brought some stone. What did you expect? I'm a sky pirate. I was not <laughs> expecting to need that much stone. But hey. uh, oh, oh, I bring, um, we need stone cutters Maybe it has well. some stone to Yeah, okay. Your... There's a little stone cutter. And dip Perfect, slate. perfect. perfect. Well, that's, wonderful, wonderful. That's everything. Alrighty. Oh, yeah. I got it, thanks. Wonderful. I think it is about time to get path building. Let's go. Are we all done here? Are we, all done? we are all done. So, mission accomplished. Good work, everybody. Let's go. Let's have a let me just let me just the give the payment to. Oh yes, I forgot we were getting paid. Oh, I've just stolen somebody else's. That's Wait, do I get else's. paid too? Nah, just joking. Technically, you get paid, but you get half uh, half the uh, the price we were supposed to have. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 how many, oh my, how many, how long you've been in the uh, blaze form? You like have like. Oh, don't worry Wait, about it. Man. I was about to Whoa. return you this. Then you did not realize I took this. <laughs> Levy. <laughs> you I return it to your box. Uh, you. For, you know what? For <laughs> that, you're not getting the diamonds. Rain. You're not getting the diamonds. <gasps> she gave it back. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, KKK, okay, okay, stop pushing your, your diamonds. Oh, yay. Then oh. your diamonds. There you go. <laughs> yay. Yeah, thank you, Matt. We did. We get the money. 
Okay, I'm enjoy go back your new part, now. sir. Yes, en enjoy the new we part. We do screeny. Yes. Screeny. Uh, oh, yeah. We, oh, wait, we have a screen. Oh, screen. of course, screen. it's raining. Of course, the rain. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait for me. Gosh, that was a fun little job, wasn't it? And now, with all that taken care of, let's finally head on home to the part of today's episode that I am the most excited about. And that is going to be our Villager Breeder Pirate Tavern. And now you may notice this little area right here looks a little bit different. I was having another one of my terraforming crises or whatnot, and I started digging away at the terrain. I still want to reshape quite a bit of this central area, but that's going to be a later job, and we're going to be redoing all these paths as part of building our villager breeder tavern but the first big thing we need to take care of is actually going to be destroying our enchanting setup right here because I want a little bit more room for this tavern I want to be able to kind of tuck it into this whole area here so we have room for another build or little scene maybe a park or something in this middle area so first things first I want to kind of cut this hill back to about this point here which is going to mean getting rid of this little piece piece out front here and destroying our tiny enchanting room tucked away in here. So let me quickly get rid of all of that. And coming up here, you may see that I've finished chopping that segment off of our hill and just kind of played around with the terrain a bit more. I'm going to reshape and redo kind of this whole central hill a little later on. But for now, that gives us the space we need to work with. And you can see I've started with the little corner of our tavern build here. And now I want to lay out some general dimensions so we can get to work on our village breeder after we kind of figure out where it needs to go. Yeah, I like that. I think that's pretty good. It fills the space well and we're gonna have plenty of room in here for a little bit of tavern and for our main breeder. And now for this villager breeder, I'm not so much following a tutorial as kind of winging it as I go, but I have watched tutorials from both Logical Geek Boy and Shulkercraft and also built a villager breeder before. So I'm just going to be kind of taking what I've learned from all of that and remodeling it so that it fits well into our pirate tavern. Wonderful, and now we need to think about the village output. And I'm considering doing it facing this way. The original plan was going to be to kind of have it move more into the build and take up more of our internal space, but I really want room for a cute pirate tavern interior, so I've instead decided we're going to have it go into our hill here. There we go. So something like that, I think, should work. So. Using a minecart, that does go across, awesome. Now I just kind of winged it with the way that water funnels into this space, so I hope that works out. I wanted something fairly centralized so we could kind of have this collection point directly underneath the breeder, so I guess we're just gonna have to see how effective this is once we get our villagers in. Which brings us on to the next part, which is the fact that it is dark, because we may not have any nearby villagers, but what we do have are some zombie villagers buried around the place that I have found while I've been adventuring in the area. And this is something I used to do a lot back in First Light to look for villagers. I didn't have any nearby actual towns there either, but I would fly around at night just like this and play I spy the zombie villager all over the local terrain. And when I'd spot one, I'd take them underground, put them in a boat and bury them for safekeeping later, which I've got one just over there in the hill, but I might have to fight my way to it. Right here. This. This is the strat. This is what I mean. So this is going to be our first villager. Do I feel equipped to get him? Yes, I do. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So destroy the boat. Panic, run. Now we run and he follows us all the way to our wonderful new villager breeder. Assuming he doesn't fall into one of our animal pens. So I'm gonna need you in there, thank you. Now I'm gonna really quickly just chuck a dirt roof up here. Oh, there we go, a little bit haphazard, but it'll do the job. Now we have another zombie villager buried actually down in the mines from a very long time ago now. This might be it. Oh, I hear a zombie. Hello, it's been a while. How have you been? My goodness. And look, he's already got his farmer hat on. He is ready. He is ready to take up some farming work in our town tavern. 
Oh, and also, we have a cat now. We got this super cute little cat when we were gathering acacia over in the savanna that's quite a ways from here. It's over by the desert outpost I built a few episodes ago now. And this was one that Spy helped me tame. It spawned in the acacia village right near where we were hanging out chopping all those trees. He swung by while we were gathering wood for the shop out that way and I gave him a small sum of diamonds and a few stone cutters in return for his help with the acacia gathering job. While we were there, I spotted this super cute little black cat and I didn't have any cats yet. Spy kindly went and got me some raw fish so that I was able to tame this cutie. And now we have a cat, what should we name him? I've been tossing up a few, I definitely think something piratey. But um, let me know in the comments down below if you have any ideas, guys. And there we go, nice. So we have our two zombie villagers. The next phase involves curing them. Do you think I can splash them both with one? I might splash myself too, but ha. Yes, nice, and then apples. Yay, we got it. Undead sailors medic, X marks the spot. That's cool. I think we should be fine to just break the boats and they can do their thing. They can go about their life and I guess we'll find out if it works a little later on. And we have our first child. Yay! Say hello everyone to our very first baby sky pirate. And I have let this thing AFK for just a little while and collect up quite a number of villagers here in the output. And we've got, I don't want to know, I, wait, how many? I'd guess like at least six in there, right? And they're definitely all filtering through into the right spot. And with that, I realized we were definitely going to need an off switch on this one. So I've just built in some sticky pistons that serve to block the line of sight of our villagers there, seeing the beds, registering that there's too many and trying to breed and create more villagers. So we're just going to leave that one turned off for now because we do not need any more villagers at the moment. And with that, I think it is about time for us to build our tavern around our brand new villager breeder. So, without further ado, let's roll the time lapse. Crow's Nest Tavern is now complete and I am so happy with how this build has turned out. It has been a long haul to get it to the point it's at now and we have done a full comprehensive interior as well and I am so keen to share this build with you guys. I think it's so fun and it makes such a lovely centerpiece for our base as a real homage to our pirate roots and I have a whole bunch of lore built into the kind of story of this build as well. See this ship here? This ship is a ship known as the Daybreaker, which is the very original ship me and my crew when we first found these lands voyaged across the seas in, ending up shipwrecked here on the shore and turning our ship the Daybreaker into our very first home here in our now Sky Pirate settlement. And 
coming into the interior I really hope you guys love this just as much as I do it's so atmospheric and so fun we've got little splashes of sand all over the floor here and we have our bar here at Crow's Nest Tavern we've got a bunch of drinks melons this is also my main potion brewery so this build is a double function or triple depending how you look at it with a potion brewery here of course our villager breeder and I've got a few of my old crewmates upstairs that are also villagers we can trade with of course we can play music and stuff in here we've got some seating areas here on the right and coming out this way a little outdoor seating area as well with some kegs some booze a little bit of fruit and pickles and things scattered about a lovely spot to sit and enjoy the scenery especially once we get a bit more of this outside area done up and coming back inside we have a little ladder up here to help us get up and do maintenance here with the breeder and coming downstairs this is our little basement and storage. I've got raw gold built into the walls here and a whole bunch of loot and things scattered all over the ground. It might be a little bit framey because I accidentally have a few too many villagers in here, but we're going to sort that out very, very soon. We've got a number of upcoming builds that we're going to be using villagers for, so we'll be dealing with that shortly. And this is Billy Bob Jones. He is our resident zombie that helps us get the best stonks possible with our villagers. And coming back out, we can also head upstairs, which we're just going to be doing by climbing our crow's nest here. And this takes us up to the second floor where the first thing you're gonna see is this little decorative room nothing too fancy going on in here this is also how we climb up to the very top of the crow's nest and in here this is kipper man he was our fisherman back on the original voyage so lore wise the four villagers we have living up here are the last surviving crew members from the original voyage to these brave new lands though three of them aren't named kipperman's the only one with a name thus far but i'm sure i'll name the others soon so he's a fully leveled fisherman villager and I've done this little trick with the doors so the villagers can't get in or out of these rooms and get into this one which would allow them to escape. So this is also our navigator. We have a cartographer and we re-rolled this a whole bunch to get one that sold us black banners as well which I think is really perfect. And we have this fun little room. Also in the lore this was my bed. This is the bed I slept in. That's my gold there right next to it and of course the keg directly above the bed head. Gotta have that grog. <laughs> just in here this is our smoker for our butcher villager we have this bit of a taller room with some kegs and stuff around and coming upstairs in through here this is where the bell is so this is where they all congregate at this time of day but this is the cartographer's room this is a little mapping desk and of course the old map our first map of the area that we made and I mean did we meet everybody yeah we've also got the weaponsmith so our three villagers here we've got a weaponsmith whose room is kind of this one we've got the butcher down there who of course I really love because stew when he buys kelp which I think is so perfect and cartographer upstairs so we also have a little bit of some basic villager trading set up out here and coming up to the top of the crow's nest with a beautiful sunrise way out there oh my goodness that is bright but I am really happy with how this build has turned out. I love that we can climb all the way up here and get another wonderful view. This is going to be such a nice spot to look out over our land, especially once we do up this whole area. This is a great view out towards the archway and up the trade route. And with that, I do think that is about where we are going to call it for today's episode. I did just want to take a brief moment here to say thank you guys so much for being so patient with me for this one. I know I've been on a little bit of a break from uploading here, and that's very much just been a bit swamped with uni work really now that we're back in semester, as well as being unwell. I was rather sick for a while there too, but I'm really excited to be getting back into uploading soon. And I did just want to say happy one year. It has officially been more than a year since we started uploading videos here on the channel and it has been an absolute blast. I could not have done it. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, let's that didn't happen if things are fine I could not have done it without you guys and without all the support and I cannot wait to see everything we create in the future of the channel as well so don't forget to leave a like comment subscribe let me know your favorite thing about today's episode here on the core smp from our massive grind laps to the pathwork in france to our wonderful sky pirate tavern here in the back which i really do just love i think it adds so much character to our base here and i will see you in the next one
Bye-bye.